Consider, for instance, this line, quote, imagine a powerful man as a ship, like the Titanic. The ship, the Titanic, is, is Mr. Depp. And Ms. Hurd was the iceberg that sank him. Because in Mr. Depp's world, you don't leave Mr. Depp. And if you do, he will start a campaign of global humiliation against you. Oof. Welcome to DBL. I'm Sam here with Jeff, Erica, and Tori. Attorneys for Johnny Depp and Amber Heard are making their closing arguments today. But despite capturing everyone's attention, there still seems to be some confusion on what this defamation trial is really about. So for a legal perspective, we are joined today by former prosecutor, friend of the show, and veteran trial attorney, Mark Eiglar. Yep. Oh, that's very kind of you. Very <laughs> sweet. Thank you. <laughs> He's so okay. deadpan. <laughs> Mark, let's get to it because the Twitter sphere is a Twitter about this this whole trial. And I think that some people might be spot on. Some people might be getting it wrong. What do you think people are getting the most wrong about this trial? Okay, I say this with love and respect to the members of the court of public opinion. They don't have a clue of what this case is actually about. It's not a spectator sport. It's not I'm on Team Depp or Team Heard and who is who do I like more? It's about this. It's about something that people haven't chosen to read. It's a Washington Post op-ed published December 18th, 2018 by Amber Heard who simply documents her feelings about being a domestic violence victim. She doesn't name Johnny Depp. And so the sole issue is whether what she's writing is constitutionally protected or not. Is it defamatory? And in order for Johnny Depp to prevail, and I don't believe that he will, he's got to show that she completely made everything up. Actual malice. I don't believe she hit that burden. Mm. Mm, wow. We'll see. We'll see. So, Mark, what is a closing argument? Tori's explained it wrongly on the show yep, before. many times. <laughs> <laughs> what does it involve and how important are they? I have not. Critical. <laughs> Critical. Okay? Because Amber Heard's lawyers need to do the following. They need to take this article and blow it up and go line by line and say, okay, what is not constitutionally protected? The fact that she said that I was exposed to abuse at a very young age? No, that's protected. Okay, that I felt the full force of our culture's wrath for women who speak out. She's allowed to say that. That's protected. I had the rare vantage point of seeing in real time how institutions protect men accused of abuse. We don't want to take away her First Amendment freedoms to say those things because then they come for our freedoms. So it's about the First Amendment. However, the part in it in which she says she was an abused person, which is in it, I don't think that Johnny Depp shows, or I think, I don't believe the jury believes that he actually abused her. And if that's the one line that they need to des describe, I think she looks like a fake. And I think she looks like that in terms to the jury. You're disagreeing, is that correct? I'm saying, let's say 99%, and I don't think it's as high, of what flowed from her lips is absolute malarkey and the jurors think that she's full of it. If there's 1% belief that she believed that she was an abused person mm. and thus has the right to then write about that experience, mm. he doesn't win. That's the issue. It's not who do you like more. It's not about that. The sole issue is did he meet his burden of proving that she lied, actual malice, right. when she talked about her experience as an abused person. And listen, the audio tapes alone suggest, at least verbally, she went through hell. Hmm. Now, That's enough. Right, now, but Mark, let me, okay, so, if you can show malice, like for instance, an ex-TMZ employee testified that Amber Heard staged a photo op of herself leaving a courthouse with a bruise on her face. How will testimony like this impact a jury? Will they see malice if they truly believe that that was staged? Well, if they believe that she made that up and or lied throughout her testimony, yes, it makes it more apt for them to believe that she then somehow wrote this op-ed piece intentionally trying to harm him and was not a victim at all. It's still hard to believe it though. Would any of you, and I say this rhetorically, invest any of your hard earned dollars that Johnny Depp never did anything to her verbally or physically that could have led her to reasonably believe that she was a victim and thus right from that experience. 
all of you would say, no, I'm not investing any of my money. There was craziness going on with both of them. And thus, she has the right to write about her experience. But doesn't that come down to what we think assault is? Or abuse. If it, or, or abuse, abuse. is. Yeah, like, yeah. Whether it's verbal, whether it... Mental. I think it's... Doesn't it go to each uh, juror's definition of what that is to them? It can be. But it goes to whether she has the right to say what she wrote and read through it step by step. Jeff, I keep telling you, read the damn article. I can't get you to do it because it doesn't have <laughs> pictures of famous people and, and who act like you know, Mark, we do well, when they yeah. go to the grocery store. He read it. Say, you only like, read pictures. Let's go through it. I, I would argue with him if I had a point. I don't. <laughs> He's valid. He's valid. You got me. Like, I don't read picture books, Mark. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, but okay, so here's the thing, because obviously circling back to the initial question, it seems as though you're um, you're leaning towards Amber's side or completely on Amber's side. But also, this is a jury, right? So it might be yes. like people like people on Twitter. So in your legal opinion, who had made the most compelling argument, Amber or Johnny? Okay, here's how I answer that question. They both made an unbelievably compelling argument that they should never get back together. That's it. Like ever. Now, again, that's out of the legal realm. I'm not a marital expert, but I have never chosen to defecate in the marital bed. I've never recorded my wife, and I don't think she has either, okay? We didn't even need but to other know that. that yeah, we did. I think they both failed to prove their lawsuits. Their lawsuits needed to prove certain elements legally, and they failed to do so. Mm. Now, jurors are, you know, listen, uh, they're not the brightest sometimes. I had one jury come back and ask, what dose, D-O-S-E, that's how they spell does, <laughs> unamos mean? Oh, they couldn't no. spell unanimous. unanimous. They didn't know what it meant right after the jurors were informed of what it was. So I have no faith in jurors <laughs> most of the time. But in this case, they, I believe, will find that Johnny Depp didn't prove that what she was doing was completely lying. She would have mentioned him in the article if that was her intention. You think so? I don't know. You said you had no faith in juries. And I'm really feeling like it's going to look like Twitter. And it's just a matter of like which Twitter, because there's different neighborhoods, <laughs> <laughs> and everybody got together for the same block party. Yeah, I hope it's not like that. I hope that the defense lawyers for Heard go through and say, folks, even if you don't like our client, even if you think at times what she said wasn't supported by the evidence, the only issue is about the First Amendment. If you say that what she wrote was unlawful, well, it, it, it's all about what you're being being able to write. It's your experience. It's what you believe. But it took and, down and Johnny it, Depp, no? Yeah, it took what about down? the court of public opinion? Right. I know that, that you're not, you know, in there. It's a fictional place. But in reality, it impacts people's careers. Right. It impacts people's perception. So the court of, the, of public opinion are on Johnny Depp's side, no matter what happens in this trial. We can't prevent that. Listen, I don't disagree with you that that article further adversely impacted his career. That's of no consequence to me because legally, if what she wrote is constitutionally protected, and I've said it now about four times, then I don't care the result. She is allowed to do that. Dare somehow we say that what she wrote in that article, which you guys still have not read, is unlawful. <laughs> then when you want to write about your experience, then you're not able to. Not when it's made up, in I was my still, opinion. I, I was oh. still thinking on how to spell unanimous. I'm just I was like, staring, I'm staring at Mark Igar's lighting. He's got that he's got a great purple. season two Housewives yeah. lighting. He does. <laughs> lighting. He's got it Is that it really done. what this has become? Is that what we're focusing on? Okay. Hey, you All started right. it. Who did start it? Mark, it seems like it doesn't even matter who's telling the truth, but in your opinion, what do you think the verdict's going to be? I believe that both of them will not prevail with their lawsuits. I think that jurors will follow the law, hopefully. And I didn't mean all jurors cannot be relied upon, uh, Erica. I believe that for the most part, however, they do follow the law. And in this case, they're going to say, Johnny, you didn't prove to us that this was all manufactured, that she was never, ever a victim of any domestic violence. And thus, she absolutely made this whole article up. He failed to prove that. And she, of course, did not prove her countersuit. I don't know. So nobody getting anything is what you're saying. <laughs> that is correct. But the lawyers it, make money, they won't make anything. Doesn't Johnny win? Even if he loses, doesn't he win? I think he's got... You think he'll get his career back? He's got the, 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 the public court of opinion. public opinion yeah. on his side I mean, after what went for down. Him at the end of each day, I they're screaming so. for him. Am I right? Like, it's gone that way.
Good follow. Final That's your expertise. Mark. That's not my expertise. For me, I found a lot of the stuff that I learned about him, one of my favorite actors of all time, very disturbing. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, going to be fair. for me to look at him that way. If Hollywood wants to give him his jobs back, good for him. That's yeah, fair. No, well said, Mark. Thank you for bringing it home because at the end of the day, this is on both sides. This is a very disturbing, totally. chaotic, uh, unhealthy situation. So we appreciate yes. you. And Mark, yes. um, we hope that you come here live in studio one of these days. Oh, I feel cool. like you fit right in. So hopefully I we would, can arrange that. I would that. like that, but... But I, but I would be there to tell Jeff that the wall, the, uh, the the Washington Post is not for the bottom of his birdcage. You know, that would be the I don't, What's up, Mark? Mark, first what? of all, you're not coming for my know. boy, okay? All right. Was I hanging I around your wife that. recently or something? Yeah. What happened? Maybe it was that pseudo Maverick uh, invitation. I don't know. Uh, Listen, Mark, I'm stick around this. because we got me as Maverick coming up, buddy. Exactly. You're going to want to stick go. around. Exactly. And to our viewers out there, for more information on Mark and his law firm, law firm you got to go to speak to mark.com we appreciate you mark bye these guys love you all you're love great you. thanks buddy